Hello, and welcome to the world. We're glad that you're joining us again. Today we're going to another very interesting show. We're seated on location at the Healing Touch Professional Trainers School up in with Ron Raven, its founder and director. Ron has more than healing internationally and is a healer internationally. He's been doing work from and has practically work of his born healing abilities. Been years. Has a school as well as a project and is internationally renowned in the time magazine on the level. And so people have gotten to him work and work in the future. You have a chance to hear speak about the field to school system. To do since of found that everyone and clarity you are qualified one to this question. Uh, what is healing? A definition for it. Healing is and bring the spirit. And inspiration creates So it's better in spirit and body. And we're defining as way of it that the spiritual. In fact, what we're learning as human beings, having that spirit is a body. The work of the school create that better communication. Mm. And so, okay, is both oneself as well as what is the healer? The channel for the light here and himself vessel be transferred from the healer. To the healing, it comes from spirit and the healing. It is transparency. One heal with transcendent. Mm-hmm. That's the the heal heal. Okay. About form healing in your school techniques. Is that correct? Exactly right. Uh, I'd like you to elaborate on that moment. One of the things that occurs to me and he leave that he heal help the client or healing the client. That is what we do in school. Basically, all our born in this life in this consciousness. We're told when we come into life. What a beautiful idea. What is during the process of socialization, bliss, uh, into DP and entered more of the physical world and looking for continuation of that unconditional love and grace, those who are raised from our parents. We are bringing in their energy, bringing the condition the juice is flowing. And what happens during that we begin to see that parents are not sick and say, okay, well, Of bringing in more of their energy, healing more and more of what they want, they want that I can get. Yeah. What, what really capture What actually happens is that develop core. This is where our core programming comes It is not what we bring from our parents. It's not that it's Able to release their energy. 
and flow through us again. But most that's in lost. I develop that to us from our parents and then our teachers and the others. So how to leave we inherently to try and get that not very key game. Wow. I mean, I sat with many people for a number of years in the situation, interviewing, talking, all the healing. And that was a beautiful condition of the story, the story of men, if you will. Because it does really feel the truth in these words. As bliss, Absolutely. Or there are several moments that are all blissful, and then it begins to dissipate, and it is so much the parents or to bring that feeling back as it begins to dissipate. And we begin to accommodate, compensate, etc., for bringing that, bring that to us. The dance. That's the dance. So what's the programming? The entrapment later on. Now, we are faced with having to reveal, identify, and then release. So uh, that, that's, that epitomizes where we all find ourselves. And look up, I'm okay. I, I used to know exactly what I was doing, where I was going. Now I really don't know where I am or how I got here. Remember what it is that I wanted to create. And so what I teach in school as to these techniques all the six sacred practices. Six practices. And they are meditation, visualization, breath work, movement, and ceremony. All respond to these practices. And mm -hmm. practice is something that we do every day at home, any one of the six. And as you know, you can do any type of sound work. You can chant, you can drop, you can you can do yoga, you can do any one of these things. Sacred ceremony is something that is not mystical or it may be gardening in your backyard. But if you practice any of these sacred practices or a multiplicity of them, what happens is you to and grow yourself on a daily basis. When you put the heart into the ground and you open life that flows through each of us, we begin to clear away the programming by calling forth and uh, intentional action to spirit. We can round off a big energy, the radical cell, by grounding on a daily basis. And gravity to that tension, fear, and so forth from the body. So the is uh, a large, in large part, action of practicing bef so energy strong, pulsating through the body, and then learn technique. A healing school, but it also sounds like a nature school, and of well, um, we don't actually go to walk, but we do do some statements. You instruct people to so. Oh, I tell them that they need to be grounded and through the earth. Through the earth. And we do visualizations to do that. We do move, we do song, we do shamanic. Um, uh, and spirit, visions, all sorts of of the different names of creator spirit. We do a lot of techniques to get us into a place of feeling in grounded in our energies feeling feeling the energy of life moving forward. That's essential as a healer. You don't just say, okay, I'm gonna give you a healing now and go like this and you're doing Abra. you yeah. and really connect with the energy and then transmit. And this is something that I and I what I call the point protocol. And this is a protocol that every school learns to do. Acknowledge the spirit of another. 
invoke the Creator Spirit who actually does the healing to honor the person that you're working with in all ways mm -hmm. so that you don't invade their space or take their energy into your space. There's nothing oh, who is so troubled about the energy of people they work with. They need to wear the energy and the problems of the people they kill. Sometimes healing the work. It is unknown. And you're now teaching people how to healers to avoid that unfortunate circumstance. Absolutely. It is, it is implicit in being a healer to know how to be in that energetic flow and aside from the healing who receives healing and allow everyone to go on in their space so that you, them, you don't need to exactly. take their energy into your body healers. and metabolize <laughs> This is a vitally important <laughs> really, because of course we're all healing ourselves, right? and people who become healers know this on that level, correct? However, they could get themselves into more trouble if they're not following this dictum. Well, absolutely, it's so interesting. It is interesting. Healing don't really address this. Is what I have found. Uh, I haven't found it. Anywhere. I've been in the in the field for thirty years. I've worked in in at least. Uh, 15 different countries and um, have not seen it anywhere else. And it seemed to be lacking. So I've created it and put it down uh, on paper so that it As an inherent something. part of your school. Yes. And uh, eventually it'll be published information so that it'll, it'll go out to everyone. God bless. That's fabulous. Now your background is a very interesting one. It's got tremendous breadth and depth. I recall and your healing journey yourself when involved with shamans in Mexico. Is that correct? Could you tell us a little bit about that story? Yeah. Well, um, after college I went to take uh, out and went to Mexico to relax before law school, which I was relaxed. going to attend, but never, <laughs> never got there. Um, I ended up falling in love with Mexican peasant clothes and with the people of southern Mexico and um, met several shamans. They actually camped on my lawn in the morning and told me that spirit brought them there. I began to and this was in 19 and, and a couple more years the viewers know of Chinitza uh, and Monte Alban and um, so and we would get all the spirits in, we would play music, we would, we would connect with all of the of the sacred script. They took the village under their wing. Absolutely. And that began the journey. What a grounding. <laughs> <laughs> and it was strong. Yeah. Because like people come up in in life it had difficulties. And even though well I was put. <laughs> Yeah, we we all need healing. We all need healing. Sure. And so one of the aspects that uh, you, you kind of brushed up against was that healers all need to heal themselves. They're on the path of self-healing. And the magic of learning to do healing properly ensures that magnet to you those people who are matching pictures. Mm -hmm. They reveal to you those issues that you hold within that you need to heal. Mm -hmm. And so when you're doing a healing with someone, through their process, healers be aware that what is happening is they are lighting up your own issues, issues, your own issues, and those issues are what you are learning to overcome by working with various clients. So each client is not only receiving the gifts that you bring to them by being that vessel of light, but that vessel for light to flow through you. Uh, but you are also learning about your from every client who crosses the threshold. They're also absolutely, absolutely Hence, the honoring, and respecting as one of those nine points. Absolutely, because each spirit is uh, as equally qualified as the next. None of us is any better or any worse than anyone else. We're all pieces of pieces of the manifest, learn, and grow and to fulfill this very amazing odyssey of bringing the perfection of spirit.
perfection of light into and through the physical form. And that's what we're all here doing. We're learning to get better as spiritual beings in human form. And it's quite, it's quite um, uh, an incredible dance. In the documentary that you were featured in, produced by Price? Yes. You know it. Yes. You made a very beautiful point that I'd like to just bring up to the audience because I think it should be reiterated and you just were speaking to it just then. There is a level of perfection that truly exists and that is in our spiritual being, yeah. our spiritual body. And it's our human body that needs to catch up. Right. And people get confused about that. So I really love the way you articulate this point as well. It's so important. There is a disparity between our human beingness and our spiritual beingness. Mm -hmm. And as human beings, we are not yet perfected. And we are here in fact to get perfected. Schoolhouse Earth is about Mr. Fuller. Exactly. That's, that's what we're here, learning to bring that perfection through. We go through so many uh, emotional traumas and initiations in life, and we deal with all of our urges and all of our societal um, uh, dictates that it's difficult Programming. to stay. It's to stay in that spiritual awareness because we're we're trying to do as society guides us. I don't know about about viewers, but my mother told me that that basically. Um, I should try to be myself in life. And I remember saying, <laughs> why? <laughs> why, you know? All these are people, you know, these are the great athletes, and these are the great intelligences, and these are the gifted musicians and artists, and, you know, where do I fit in? You know, how do I find my place? And uh, I learned when I, was, when I was a youngster, I did have a spiritual experience at the age of eight that in awakened in me my own spiritual connectedness. So I received a gift when I was young. That has helped me. And uh, that is the producer of that which I teach. All that has followed. Yes. That's been staged in over time because when peasant clothing for a while was not the exact expression, but it has become. But the guidance to go there, to, oh, to yeah. be called. To, to be positioned. To answer that call, you know, felt in my heart, this is where I need to be. And I accepted that. And by accepting all of the direction of spirit through my life, I've benefited. And, and all of us who feel that society has great gifts for us if we do what society asks us to do, may be in fact taking the, the wrong pathway that we need to do what our heart calls us to do. Yeah. The world becomes open to us. Yes, yes. Mm. That's just true words, truly, true words. <laughs> <laughs> You're so kind. I want to uh, share with you all an experience that I had just prior to the interview of meeting with Ron and him speaking with me. First, he went into himself and connected to his higher power and spoke from there to me about certain points about me that he was able to perceive from essentially a clairvoyant perspective because it wasn't anything that he and I spoke about and he was able to tune in and relate to something that was going on with me and thereafter did a session with me to help to balance out the energy in my body that needed to be balanced and indeed we just began the journey but we did make some headway. And I feel it in my body right now. I feel the change, the shift that occurred. I hear it in my voice, I feel it in my body. So the point I'm making is that this is very real. There are many people in the world who are going about doing healing and God bless them, it's very wonderful. However, there are some very real rooted healers that I have had the opportunity to meet and to experience. And I'm very glad to say that I am seated with one of them right now. I, uh, I appreciate that so much. I've been an admirer of your work, your shows, and all of the fabulous uh, people that you have mm. interviewed. And it's an honor to be in their company and mm. yours. Thank you. 
Thank you. And to go back, however, it's important that of all things that you're doing, because there are many people in your position who work on people individually, one by one, mm -hmm. and the people come and they receive healing and they become self-healed, actually, mm -hmm. and that you have taken it upon yourself, Ron, to teach and to teach other teachers, let alone healers, so the word can get spread internationally. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. It's a very vital point. It's sort of like, instead of being a finger, you're more like the wrist or the shoulder. Controlling, do you know? Well, it's, uh, it's something that Spirit calls, us, calls upon us to do, and this is something I signed up for. So I'm just doing what <laughs> it is I'm supposed to do. Indeed. I have um, apprentices. Signed up for. Yeah. I have apprentices in Europe who have now uh, become partners with me in the Frankfurt, Berlin, and Munich schools, and I have um, many apprentices here in Rhinebeck, who, several of which have aspirations to open a healing school. So our Healing Touch, a Healing Touch program, also has its master healer training component and its teaching of the teachers component so that students of the program can then go on and open their own schools. Oh boy, that's empowering. Touch. That's highly empowering. So it's not like you're necessarily keeping them all under one rubric, although they're taking your techniques, etc., but they're being empowered to open up their own schools, sort of like the branches of a tree and move yes, outward. Under the, the skies of our, uh, of our planet, we're all parts of the same being here. There's just one of us. Utterly and we true. We all try to teach <laughs> one another. Cells in the same being, as yeah. it were. <laughs> sure. Now, can anyone come to the school, or do they have to have a background in healing, or address that if you would? Anyone who has an innate spiritual desire and feel that they need to develop their own psychic, spiritual healing awareness are invited to the school. Uh, it so is you not take them from step one, in other words. Yes. But most people who hear about the school and feel that it's for them are already ahead of the game. They're already ready to make some deep changes in their lives. You, all of those people out there watching know who they are. They're searchers, and they've gone through a lot of peripheral healing techniques, mm -hmm. or they've gone through different levels of psychological analysis, or they've, they've dealt with various issues. and they know that they're ready for something that is that will really put them in a place where they can know themselves and teach and, and do healing work with other people. Some people who come to the school are doctors, some are masseuses, therapists of all kinds. Mm -hmm. um, some are horse trainers and some are uh, artists and pianists and there are all kinds of people. Housewives, no doubt. Absolutely. And people who have been ill and have had severe mm. types of um, medical procedures and they need to rebuild their lives and they know that there's something more out there for them and they gravitate to this work too. Mm. And we teach things like... So it's very well-rounded. It, it is for all people. It's for everyone. And I, I limit it to only those who are gravitated to the work. <laughs> yes. So it's self-selecting in that Absolutely. Sense, I right? totally believe in that. Exactly. exactly. Self-selection. There's a time and a place for everyone, and so it rolls out. Yes. You know? And we work on from, from bringing in the Christ energy to the archangelic energy and initiations to balancing the heart and clearing the heart and the chakras, color healing. Um, male and female energy balancing, um, long distance healing of all kinds. Oh, beautiful. Working with the Supreme Being, uh, their white light initiations. We do a full circuit of trainings. It's psychosomatic, would you say? It deals, people can come, let's say, with very serious physical illnesses or ailments, but it sounds like you get to the emotional underbelly, if you will, of Absolutely. what that is. Absolutely. It goes to the depths of life and helps us to clear and connect with our purpose for being and our spiritual mission here on the planet. Oh, that is beautiful. Now, I think it's important for our audience to know one more thing. 
at least one more thing, <laughs> but for the moment, uh, your own background is really quite vast. I'm very impressed as someone who also of some learning. You have spent some time with the Rosicrucians. You have spent time with Alice Bailey. You have spent time with the Tibetan, the shamanic teachings. Is that correct? So oh, yeah. these all infuse the school? Absolutely. I've taken the best from each. My training is eclectic, and those messengers of spirit that have brought the best healing systems out there and share them with me and those who would pass them along are all incorporated in the skills available in the training. That is beautiful. Are there any that I left out of that listing that you think our audience should know about? Native American. Welsh, Native is American. a large Shamanic. factor. Yes. yes, and the the Berkeley Psychic Institute was one of the one of the uh, basic trainings that I had working with Native Amer American shamans and working with the the Tantra teachers, the Kundalini, the Merkaba breath, um, working with the Kundalini Research Network and the Spiritual Emergence Network. All of these things have opened my awareness, and I thank them all for the gifts that they've given to God. me. God, well. Thank you for the gift of being on the show. My pleasure, Mitchell. Absolutely, thank you. Ron. It's been great to have you. And to you. Thank you. You're providing the world with a beautiful gift with your school, and God bless that it grow and prosper appropriately. Aho. Aho. And amen. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I feel Ron is giving our world a beautiful gift with his presence and his talents and skills that are inborn and cultivated over many years. He's been helping people for many, many years and can continue and will be continuing to do so through the vehicle of his school. Thanks so much for joining us. This is Mitchell J. Raven for A Better World. We look forward to seeing you all next week.